Our general population has become further and further away from the farm, so we want to educate them about farm life. This is our 17th season at this farm, and we purchased this just for the purpose of opening a pumpkin patch back in 2006. I grew up on a choose and cut Christmas tree farm back in the 80s and 90s, so I got my, my taste for agritourism long before that was ever a, a term, because we had people come out and choose their own trees at the house, and we just loved it. When I got out of college, I knew this is something I wanted to do. We was already growing pumpkins on a wholesale level. This piece of property and house came for sale. We just jumped on it, and and dove head first. We have almost 50 activities they can do. We try to make sure we grow every year. So they can come and take a hayride and pick their pumpkins out of the field. They can go through the petting zoo and pet all the different farm animals. They can uh, j play in the new corn pit, largest pit in the Tennessee Valley, uh, bounce on the, the jump pad or the pillow bounce or go on the rat racers or the zip lines. There's definitely six, seven, eight hours of things to do if you rush through the day. Make sure you come hungry. We have 10 food locations, anywhere from funnel cakes to cheeseburgers to corn dogs to lemonade, about whatever kind of fair atmosphere food you would want, we have it here. Uh, it uh, might be less than 1% of the population is actually on the farm anymore, supplying all of our world's food. Uh, and it's up to us to make sure that we educate the public about where your food comes from. We want them to actually see the animals that produce those products. We want them to see that Cornmeal is not something that's made in a factory. It's actually shelled from that corn through that corn maze you're going through. The more we can keep people aware of what goes on in agriculture, the more understanding we'll have. And uh, agritourism has been a wonderful way for that to happen.